metabolizer of caffeine. It only taken about 20 years for this realization to sink in. So with the test like Pilcha, you can discover far less obvious drug gene correlations in a matter of days. And uh, why is it important? Well, um, drugs play a... Uh, I need to master this thing. Oh, oh, no. Okay. So drugs play a huge role in our lives. Um, people can get out of the hospitals with painkillers and uh, seniors lead long productive lives uh, because of heart medications. But unfortunately, a large number of medications are not really effective for everybody. And uh, as a country, we spend $29 billion every year on medications. About one third of it is wasted because it doesn't lead to improvements in health outcomes. And a big chunk of this waste is attributed to this mismatch between people's genetics and their medications. Uh, and it really applies to all of us because uh, over 95% of people in this room have at least one genetic variation affecting drug response. So if you ever can imagine that sometime in your life you'll suffer from migraine, it's probably a good idea to know in advance what medication would work for you. Um, and I also want to make sure that when we talk personalized medicine, we don't forget the person. So as a company, we looked at really balancing clinical utility, cost, and individual empowerment. So um, this would be a, a typical user of PillCheck, someone with a health event. It's really disruptive for an individual, and people really want to get better. So uh, it's really important for them to understand and that the medications prescribed work for them, and also they want to have confidence that whatever the doctor told them is actually going to lead to uh, better health and improvement in their condition. Um, the, which is, oh. okay. So uh, if you get this kind of pharmacogenetic test, like pill check, what kind of changes you can expect? What actually happens? Uh, in the, um, so in the recent project uh, we completed, the number was quite stunning. So 75% of prescriptions filled by an average shopper's drug mart store had to change because of insights into personalized medicine. And um, um, the changes sometimes uh, means that it's a switch to different medication, change in dose, or sometimes discontinue the drug. So the value to the individual is obvious. And uh, uh, when we started the company, we thought selling this would be a piece of cake. Uh, and, uh, but you know, we've been at it for about three years. So we're only now starting to see the light. And uh, this 22 months, yes, we're kind of at that point where several large organizations feel that 22 months have passed. Um, so, when we talk about personalized medicine, I'm sure you all heard you can get your genome read, uh, read for $1,000, but what does it all mean? Because really the value is in interpretation of this genome. And uh, uh, most doctors agree that genetics play a role in uh, how medications are effective or not effective, but uh, unfortunately, only 10% of them actually know how to apply those results. So we're back at this innovation conundrum where science is there, but clinical acceptance is only emerging and growing and takes time. The interesting thing, we talk about consumerization. So um, three quarters of consumers feel that they absolutely want to have pharmacogenetic tests because they don't want to spend all this time being a guinea pig and uh, trying different medications. And that's what we saw with our first deployments. Uh, we brought it out into the workplace and over half people in the workplace actually took the genetic test. We were shocked because we thought maybe people would feel hesitant about using genetic in the workplace. Not the case. Uh, people are quite happy if employer pays for this useful benefit to actually use it. So as a company, we're looking at a very large market, and uh, but you start thinking about healthcare. So thirty billion dollars spent on medications, and uh, um, three billion dollars sounds like a good number for a young company. But um, um, 
uh, we also recognize that uh, this um, uh, the value has to be articulated in the right way to all stakeholders. So uh, this is the picture that we show to uh, benefit providers and uh, uh, it's quite obvious that if you can cut out some of these costs, this would really help. Um, and um, uh, this, uh, this picture is very compelling, uh, compelling to the financial minds in the room. Um, but the question always comes up, and I had this conversation with public plans and private plans that say it's great, we we'll love it, we we'll love innovation, we we'll like personalized medicine, but how much money am I going to spend at the plan? Can you tell me exactly? Because they have this budget and uh, they need to make decisions and they really don't like to be disrupted. So um, as a company, other than being a genetic company, we quickly had to develop analytics capabilities. So we had to develop new skills to articulate to our buyers what actually is the value of our program and um, uh, what we uh, commercializing now, yes, there is a genetic test, but a big part of our value is helping health plans identify the cohorts of individuals who would benefit from this uh, genetically guided medication optimization. And um, um, the picture that makes sense to all these eight people that Tim showed on his uh, previous slide, so there's disability, there's drugs, there's a benefits advisor, uh, we had to learn how to articulate to all these different groups in one picture, what does it all mean if you bring genomics and personalized medicine to, uh, to the table, if you bring it into the health plan. I'm struggling to, is there, um, all right. This way? Okay. So um, the other aspect of um, success in this field uh, so you kind of have to do three things at once. You need to articulate the value, we talked about that. Uh, you need to build a robust technology that would pass diligence of a big IT departments of Sun Lives and others. And um, uh, this technology need to work in a very uh, robust way. And especially when we're dealing with genomics, there's always a question. Who is going to hold my DNA? Who is going to control it? And um, so as a company, we made a decision early on that people who give us DNA control access to it. And this was a very um, critical decision made early on by the founders. And um, this is actually unusual in genomics world. So I'm sure you all seen ads for 23andMe. This is a company where they collect DNA data and their business model is about selling data, not necessarily providing the service. And as we enter in consumerization of health services and specifically genetic services, this is a critical consideration for all of us, um, whether it's a personal decision, how you want your DNA data to be stored and managed, but it's a decision that we never had to deal with as individuals uh, before. And um, so um, as we're thinking about personalized medicine, the title of this talk was, uh, can we afford it? The short answer, no, we can't afford personalized medicine for everyone today. But uh, a clearer answer is, yes, we can afford it for people who really need it. And uh, that's where analytics come in. So um, as we're looking at, um, uh, performance of the health plan, you can really identify the cohorts of people who take many medications and uh, uh, they utilize a lot of health benefits. And these are the people that uh, absolutely should get this um, genetically guided medication optimization because uh, they will benefit as individuals, uh, because they will get better faster. And the health plan would benefit because they don't spend money on the things that don't work. Um, so lessons learned for us, um, 
We build a digital platform so we can provide a process that has no friction. It's taken a couple of years to do it, but it now exists. Uh, but frankly, <clears throat> it takes a village to really change the paradigm of medicine. And personalized medicine is a completely new way of thinking about it. So uh, clinicians, physicians, they need to come on board and uh, there's a massive education that's required. Uh, and it's not just us doing as a company, there's a movement really in that direction. And uh, uh, the most important thing, there must be a payment stream. So without reimbursement, physicians would be at best only partial adopters of this beneficial technology or any other technology. So the magic really in digital health is you start with a platform that works, but then you have to really go fast on the other two levers, which is clinical acceptance and uh, reimbursement or payment scheme. And uh, so lessons learned for us, uh, to me, digital health is change management informed by data. Change management is hard. Nobody wants to do it. And uh, uh, if you have no data, it would be even harder. So uh, I would encourage everyone in this room to start thinking about um, visible and measurable value proposition to every circle on uh, Tim's slide, because uh, uh, the other um, discovery we made as a 11 person company, we're actually selling to organizations with 10,000 employees. There's not a single person who can make a decision there on their own. There's always a large group of individuals, they need to agree, and they need to see what are they agreeing to. So those um, visible value proposition are key. And uh, uh, finally, if you don't understand economics of your offering, you're not ready. Uh, 